I was happy to hear the introduction today because yeah, I feel the same because I don't have the connection with you know physical connection with other people nowadays with those situation and yeah I, I agree thank, and also thank you so much for thinking of this as something to look up look forward to because I feel good about it when you when someone is interested in doing this and yeah and my background this is my basement studio and this is everything I'm making or I finished making and I like the clutter in a sense that it's like sort of activity happening in my life so I, I could have blurred it, but I tend to show it off as like, you know, how disorganized I am. <laughs> but I, yeah, it's part of my life. So yeah, since I can't see you in person, I just wanted to uh, have something, uh, not just a white wall. And can I just dive into the introduction and all the talk already? If you're comfortable, okay. Yes, definitely, yeah. Ah, uh, share, which one's share? Uh, share screen. Oh, which one? Share screen. Okay. Multiple participants can share simul uh, one person. Are you having trouble sharing? I'm okay. Do you see my name? Yeah, okay. Sorry, it's not cool uh, presentation format, but now it's on the PDF format. I think you can see the frames as well as the contents. So my name is Takashi Iwasaki with a Japanese background. I, I was born in Japan. And even though it's a mountainous country, my name is like Manitoba. It's so pretty, like it's flat. It's pronounced Takashi Iwasaki. It's hard to fit in an English sentence because English is like, there's strong accent here and, and some lighter sound and things like that. But it's my name is, oh, this is, Takashi Iwasaki, he did this and that and that. So yeah, it's sometimes for people hard to hard for people to put my name, full name in the sentence, but that's my name. It's very flat. Next page, and I call myself Art Enjoyer. I graduated from School of Art at the U of M, and in uh, ordinary setting, I would call myself artist, but I like art enjoyer better because I just can go to a museum or a gallery and enjoying uh, some pieces of art or music or a movie. I think those are everything art, things that you make, like food too. And I, I like and my attitude is to enjoy whatever I, I can get in my life. So I call myself art enjoyer. So it's more like um, my whole life is my uh, my stage sort of idea. So that that's my this is my card, which also has art enjoyer as my title. And whenever people ask me for uh, my portrait, or I, I have this on my website as well as other social media sort of platform. I like to present myself as more like a cheeky person, funny, instead of a very serious look of artist. And I, before I talk more about my background, I'll explain so you know what I do. Um, I used to draw more representationally or photorealistically because I thought that's how lots of people get into art, I think. And I, that was me too. So this one is from 2002. Uh, I did a sewing machine drawing and I wanted to show sort of, sometimes nowadays people make machines and now machines have become so competent and complex that we sometimes feel like we are made of machines because we, we can't really 
make a living without help of some machines or tools. And I do like to do some portraits sometimes because I think it shows the skills. If you did the eyes wrong or nose wrong, it suddenly won't look like the person. So that's how I started uh, my practice as an artist. Then one day when I was in university, I think it was a third year or second year, I thought I, I thought I hit my ceiling of doing things with the representational method because if you know like I this is a face of a person. Uh, just a second. This is a face of a person. It's hard to it was hard for me, not for everyone though. It was hard for me to go beyond expressing more than that. And also this too. It looks just like a sewing machine and it's hard for me or for the viewers to pass that point of, okay, it looks like a sewing machine. And I wanted more fluid and uh, more difficult maybe for people to understand. So I was doodling and I liked these shapes and colors and forms, which I didn't explore before. It could look like some slime falling down or yeah, part of microbe or something like that. And I really enjoyed it. So I started to do more, became more colorful, more complex. And I like the background usually. I still do that too with the white or maybe black sometimes. So you don't have the sense of location of the objects or things that I'm drawing or painting. And it was oil painting. It became more like this. It was so easy with oil to mix colors and make it more blurry and not very defined as shapes. So this was the stage I was sort of exploring what I could do. And this too, so I played with shapes, more blocky angular shapes opposed to the previous rounder, um, softer shapes. And this seems more like it's becoming something while being sort of vague and abstract. I thought of this. Do you see the cursor I'm moving? Yeah, okay, good, good. I thought of this as an eye and this as hand of frog or something like that and floating in the space. And at that time too, I was sort of playing more with the formal quality, which is how things appear instead of what it means or what's the deeper essence of the work. So I was playing with, oh, this is a warm color. I want to play something with colder color in contrast. So this was that too. And now this is what I more or less do. More detailed lines are more defined. Um, there are more shapes that I want to express with this. I, I love the shape of swirly candles, hard, candle, hard candies. So this part. I probably took from those elements and some flower motifs and shapes of uh, sprouting seeds here or this head of a dinosaur. And I often use this uh, circular or what do you call oval shape, which could look like a testicle or which could look like a uh, spoon. I like things that look organic and I, I like to think about sexual things too because some people don't like going to that sexual uh, content or topic but I think it's very essential to people. We Everyone was born from a mother and you know before that happened that happened too right but people don't talk too much about it. I don't but I, I think I like to let some images or ideas come into my work so I can discuss if I wanted to. And this is with a black background. I thought of um, creatures in the ocean, deep underneath the ocean, so no one had ever seen. I like to imagine things in my head. And I think sometimes I feel like my image or my work has been already finished in my head. I think it's same for some musicians or cook too, but I just wanted to make something visual 
physical that other people can see that too. I think it's part of my egocentric uh, idea that, oh, I want to show this to people because I've done it. And it's sometimes a chore to make the thing physically done because I feel like it's done already. But I like the process of sharing my images with other people. And I do embroidery as well. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see. Uh, it's a blurry. And I got into embroidery because uh, in the third year of university, I think that was in 2004 or five, I think five, 2005. Um, my professor said, oh, um, the assignment for this week or this month is uh, decorative, just decorative. You just have to expand from that idea of decorative. And I couldn't think too much other than, hey, yes, embroidery. I like embroidery. And I just started getting into embroidery. I'll show more of those after this. It's close up. It's got a special sort of unique characteristics and physicality that I can't make with other mediums. Really. And I, yeah, I have two kids. One is three years old and the other one is seven. And we watch lots of YouTube uh, music channels and things like that. And there was a scene, this is a cute um, kids song, which goes like, Walking in the jungle, walking in the jungle, we are not afraid, we are not afraid. And, and they en encounter uh, with a tiger, but it actually happens to be a baby tiger just purring, but people just imagined, kids imagined, oh, it's scary. Or snake, but it's tiny snake baby. And they go through the jungle with uh, things. And I thought, oh, okay, I really like this idea. So I just decided to do my Takashi jungle with the things I usually draw or paint and people walking with an, you know, axe or a rope and things like that. I like doing very instant sort of uh, artwork with the idea of that moment and capture that as my sort of diary. And I've been into, I've been to India and my, my wife is from Taiwan and in those two countries, there are lots of mopeds everywhere. And in Taiwan or Chinese culture, peanuts is in everything. Peanuts are in uh, dessert, in savory food. So, so I thought, oh, okay, there is some similarities of mopeds and peanuts. And this is one day I imagined, oh, uh, Taiwan and India all at the same time. And I like to do some uh, social commentaries too. Those trees are not painted or put on. It's this uh, white backing paper. I just cut them out. So it, it's the void and I scanned it. So the gray part is the one you're seeing the backside of the scanner. So it's, these are the voids, empty shapes. And this is the actual one I did collage with uh, magazine paper you know, like fashion magazines, I cut, cut them out and paste them on. I love the colors of uh, magazines. And those are the prints uh, from wood colored patterns or wood um, prints from a magazine. So I wanted to say, oh, people cut out natural resources and build things for themselves. And now, now what? But in this sort of more comical, funny way visually, but I like to pull people in by showing something more approachable. And when you look at it, oh, it's a bit sad. Or something like this too. I had, I punched out a lot of holes one day and oh, what to do with these uh, little bits and oh, put them on, on the paper. The, the last one with the bear was a little bit more thought process went into my mind and this one is more instantaneous okay i've got the material so let's do something about it it looks like snow i thought of some like funny happy fun things falling from the sky maybe around christmas it's appropriate i guess 
And so I'll talk about myself a little bit. I was born in Japan. It's a, there's an island called Hokkaido in northern part of Japan. And in, two, uh, in 1982, I'm almost, uh, I'm turning 40 this year. And Hokkaido is as cold as Winnipeg when it's really cold. Minus 20 is the coldest you usually get. So yeah, you can't compare that with minus 40, occasional minus 40 of Winnipeg. But I've grown up in the cold. So coming to Canada, especially here in Winnipeg, was not a shocking thing for me. So it's a town of Shimizu. It's a smaller town in the scale of Japan. It's a small country. Anyway, the population is 9,000. So Winnipeg feels uh, much bigger to me. And I heard that there are more population of uh, dairy cows in my town than humans. It's like this. Both of my parents didn't do anything farm related, but yeah, I saw, I smelled and saw things dropping all the time. Yeah, lots of milk from that region. In Japan too, if I say, oh, I'm from Hokkaido. Oh, you must love so much, so much milk and cheese. Yes, they're not wrong about that. And uh, I was lucky when I was in grade nine, uh, there was a program put up by a travel agency in my region. And I was able to come to Canada in Edmonton for two weeks and stayed with the family. So it's a homestay program, uh, but with a bunch of other uh, kids in my grade, grade nine. And I thought my English was good because my score in the small town school, you know, you don't expect so much about education in a small town. My score was good, always A, A plus, good. I felt good and it came like speechless because literally speechless because I couldn't really speak and I couldn't understand what they were saying. Like, oh, this is good regret in my life, but I still love English. And I always loved art too. And by the time I finished high school, I thought, oh, okay, I want to study art and English too. What to do? It's hard to measure those two separate uh, specialties in one school year. Uh, art school, I still want to go to art school. And it's hard to do in Japan because no one really speaks in English in you know day-to-day -day life. And, oh, Canada, I had been there when I was grade nine and I had a really, Good experience. I felt defeated, but I, can, I think I can accomplish this time. And I was a little too late in the application of school. So, you know, those like major hotspots like Toronto and Vancouver, they were already past the deadline. And uh, there were some schools I still could apply for, and Winnipeg and Nanaimo, BC, those two schools uh, accept, accepted me after you know, sending portfolio back then, it was not online, all physical. And, you know, pure later lost my uh, uh, portfolio on the way back return. So I didn't get them. I was so mad about at that time, but now I think, okay, okay, those were high school uh, drawings. Anyway, I'm okay. I got over it. And Nanaimo is, it's beautiful. I, I heard I've never been there. I went to uh, Vancouver Island, but not to Nanaimo. And it's a small community. It's, I think, vibrant in a certain way as art scene. But I thought Winnipeg would have better, longer um, future for my position. So I, start, I decided to come to Winnipeg. And if you, oh, sorry, I didn't update. It's to almost 20 years now. I'm still here. And I love the multicultural, diverse uh, country because my neighbors, well, I live in the West End area of Winnipeg and my next door neighbor has Filipino background and two doors down, um, right next door is uh, uh, native Canadian families. And across from my place, I think there are some Vietnamese and some African descent and European and 
I feel like I'm traveling the world. I talk to my when I talk to my uh, friends in the neighborhood and the restaurants too. You can get authentic things everywhere because first generation or second gen generation uh, immigrants they open up restaurants and the size of the city is nice. People are friendly because I when I talk to you or someone randomly in the city. Unlike I'm talking to someone in Vancouver, I just bump into tourists half the time. But here, if I start a conversation, strike a conversation, we are more, mostly likely from this area. And I like that. I, I feel immediately attached to uh, the, the land and people in Manitoba. And it's more laid back than in Japan. And yeah surprisingly you don't expect maybe but art market in japan is not that vibrant people don't buy art yeah, it's hard to find pictures of any artist or it doesn't have to be professional or hobby artists work on someone's house on the wall of someone's house you might find kids pictures but that's about it they like posters more than uh, original or they, they think they can afford only posters, but I guess they happen to look around. And my goal as an artist is to create positive and playful atmosphere. That's what I'm gravitated towards too. Though there are sad things and bad things happens in life. And there are, I could also do things about like how to solve the problem, but I like, I like, cause lots of people do that very well, much better than I think than I can. So I like to stick to the idea of, okay, bringing something positive because I like, I like that. And I think life is too short, so why wouldn't I? And yeah. So basically happy things, that's what I like. And I was commissioned, I was invited by a festival in Taiwan, by, uh, sponsored by a bank, so they had a space for this annual festival in 2011, I think. And yeah, it was a really dark ATM room, which only had like six or seven ATM machines like this, and it's very enclosed. It's a dedicated ATM space. And oh yeah, some people are probably paying bills and oh, some debts and things like that. And why, why, why wouldn't I make it at least happy when they come in? Oh, this feels so nice until they realize the reality of like, oh, oh shit, I have to pay so much this month. Yeah, and busy sort of imaginary world, people uh, riding, running, uh, flying with wings sometimes. And I like to imagine lots of things too, like, we know Winnipeg is so cold, but, but um, my wife and I love avocados. I heard bad things about political things happening in, about avocado and how it's grown in uh, warm climate zones in the world. But yeah, I thought, okay, we'll make a greenhouse in Winnipeg with uh, solar energy extracted by the things on top of the roof and we'll harvest avocados hasn't happened but i can imagine i can imagine dream on and this the weather uh it's i don't i don't really believe in this but you know i i like the fairy tale folk tale sort of idea of oh weather has been provided by someone above but i thought maybe more mechanical and some weather person is making as rains and things like that. Just the thought of a day. And I like having movies which starts with the something that ends. You know, you've seen some movies which starts with like this theme of this idea and it ends with something similar, but some twist. I like that. It's beginning and ending is almost the same. And I thought of this as an idea now, okay, I have a car, I cut out a car. This is a collage out of a magazine paper. I think the car is the size of your thumb or two thumbs. It's very small. And I made a car and chopped it in half. 
So it's, it comes from the same guy. I put the back to the front, front to the back. So it looks like it's uh, running in a circle with my imaginary landscape. And I like buying antique frames. So I go to Goodwill sometimes and buy wooden antique frames and I like carving them painstakingly little by little. Then paint them in fresh gold. It's not real gold. So, so it's not that worthy, but I painted in gold. <laughs> I like that look of gold. And my artistic goals and interest is very uh, my self-centered, I would say. Visualization of my imaginary world and landscape. I like to put it out to the world, out of my head, so people can see. And this too, uh, the land has is becoming scarce, especially in the central area of uh, West End. You know, unless you demolish something, you don't have the land. I know there are lots of farmlands out there, but they're not dedicated for living or doing uh, other businesses other than farms at the moment. So I thought, okay, now I want to make a motel, but it's floating in the sky. I don't know how the energy is generated for floating or what the situation is, but I just thought hunger motel would be a fun thing. And this too, under scene, underwater scene. When I, whenever I make my background black, I always think of underwater. See, anemone. And these two, I like to sort of have maybe um, breast and with nipples, or you could, I, I always think that, but at the same time, I like to make it look like it looks like a balloon because it's not facing towards you, but facing up. And these two shapes of maybe condoms. I, I, I think they're beautiful things, things that are functional, to you know to babies or to human use and fits our body very well those are beautiful things doesn't matter the size and how it came about i, I love those things so I, I i reuse them in my work to make them look like something else and this too ah it's too big The canvas, I think the width uh, is probably 14 inches by 18 inches in actual dimensions. So it's not huge. It's, it's rather smaller, comfortable size for me to paint in several sitting. And I thought of this because I, I, like, I, I, like I like cutting off the corners and you know sort of not fitting everything into the canvas. Because I think if I do that, you can sort of imagine what's, what's being cut off. What could have been outside of the frame? And I like that. I like that for myself. And I like that. I like to imagine that the viewers will think that too. And what I thought was, this is a very little bit of tail of a big fish or a creature or a spaceship. And it goes tenfold to the left. And this too. This is a bit of this little mouth of little creature, but it's not actually little. It goes like 100 feet outside of the frame. That was my idea of something huge getting to the smallest canvas I could find. Yeah, instead of people write diaries sometimes because they want to remember something. For me, I think if I did, I've, I've kept diary in the past for many years, but I don't revisit them because they're not that interesting for me to visit unless I, I have an agenda to find something on a certain day. So I decided to do more. It's not every day diary, but in a period of time, I make this and I go back, I look at the title, I look at the image, 
oh yeah yeah right my kids did this to me i do the revenge no no, no not that uh my kids did this to me so i remember and this dude it's a day what do you think it is if you uh, this is a question to you what did you think i uh did with the embroidery you can speak with the mic on fireworks fireworks yeah that looks like fireworks anybody else people can also um text type into their chat if they want to just so you know just so everyone knows the round part looks like a dandelion fluff this, yeah <laughs> i agree and down below it it looks like somebody doing a high kick standing on one green leg oh that's good i like that <laughs> that's not exactly what i meant but th this is what i like about hearing people's uh views and opinions and ideas um could be a snake or you might be continuing with your condom theme <laughs> okay i like that you already got that point <laughs> okay i think i'll start explaining those are not uh, exactly what I did, but I really like the idea that it's I think it's working for my purpose that I don't I want to depict something at, for my purpose, but for people to just to do whatever they want with their imagination. And I was at the YMCA one day swimming and I, I, I love swimming, but I haven't done it for many, many years. I'm not a good swimmer though, but I think it's a really good exercise because I hate sweating. But when I swim, I don't know if I'm sweating. And <laughs> this is my head. I used to have ponytail. I have a bun. Can you see me now too? In this, yeah, I have a bun, but I, I, my hair was shorter, and I used to have like this hooped ponytail in the back. So it's it's a band here in my ponytail because you don't want to be swimming with long hair just floating around in the swimming pool and th these are the goggles with this you know as an adjustable band and you know those like cup like lenses and when you swim closer to the uh where, where you started up in the ceiling you see those pennant looking flags I was going to say that I recognize those because oh. I go I go to the Sherbrooke pool regularly, oh, and they cool. have they have two bands of the triangles, uh, you know, midway up to the ceiling. Yeah, I and imagine I thought, that, oh, you... that reminds me of the pool. Okay, cool. You got that. That's great. Great. I like that. Yeah, I think if you're swimming upwards, looking up the ceiling, I guess some people thought, oh, the swimmers will hit their heads. So. Okay, warning, coming to the edge. And that's what I think it is. I've never looked into it though. And men, uh, for men's uh, swimming pants, they usually have a mesh underliner. And yeah, it's, it's a brief shaped uh, mesh underliner. And the cylinder is my thigh sticking out of it. And I didn't want to make the second one because the one is probably good enough and it will look too much like, I think, a leg if I had two of them. And this is the locker key. I think the worst nightmare for me is to lose the key and go out of the pool all naked <laughs> or just with uh, swimming pants, maybe in the middle of winter. So I, this is, you know, place for adjusting your waist. I put the hole, uh, lace into the hole and tie this together. So unless it's undone, it's unlikely with the, you know, when it's wet, it's hard to un undo it. So this is my solution for not losing the key. And those are the suds in the pool. It's one day from my YMCA time. Yeah, but I don't think it, you'll get that very easily without being told. Next one. And this too, you know, in Winnipeg, I didn't see this until I came to Winnipeg. In in the springtime, you know, frozen rivers, they break apart, the frozen ice will break apart into different separate sheets. 
of ice and they jam into each other crushing and so beautiful i thought it was like wow this is magical so i used those uh, hol holographic stickers they change colors depends on, depends on the direction you're looking at and yeah a friend of mine live on uh scotia street and that's her it's me with the bun and my wife and there was a car we came in and one of those is her house it's one day from this looking at the beautiful river talking to my friend ziba that's her name yeah, so I remember, I would have forgotten about it if I didn't do, make this one. Yeah, I even dated here, so. So 2012, March 21st, I saw her with my wife. And this too. A friend of mine, Beth, she's got the condition when, it was in the winter time, when she comes uh, into, when she goes out in the really cold place, outside her one eye stays kind of cold and the other eye gets so irritated that it turns red and her eye it's her eye starts to water like everyone everyone's eye would mind as often when it's really cold and she had a fur hat it's her back back profile it's she had a fur hat and had a long hair with ponytail and she had blue skinny jeans so those are two her two legs. But that's the day she visited me and we had a chat. And the story of eye watering and ears turning two different colors it was fun for me to remember. I don't usually stick to this exact colors unless I wanted blue jeans. The fur hat wasn't this like aurora looking colors. It was just brown, like the edge of those. Her hair was not colorful, but I like making things more fun than just, you know, blonde. Yeah, my artistic goal is to bring positiveness and happiness to my life, to the audience life. And yeah, my visual diary. And ultimately, as an artist, I just want to do whatever I want and get away with it. Because in art, you can. If you, if you have a restaurant and made intentionally horrible tasting food, I don't think you'll get away with that. Well, I guess you can get away with that, just you don't have customers. But in art, the more bizarre you can make it, it's sometimes more successful. It doesn't matter how, you know, craftsmanship is done. If it looks like my work in a bad or, or you know, uh, grotesque or sometimes, furious rage um, creating way i think that's successful in art and i have to manage my time as an artist as a job i can take time off but i have to put the time back sort of if i i can't slack off all the all the time i could and yeah it's i manage doing creating by promotional things and business side is always on my shoulder too. Yeah, and completing work doesn't equal money. So in case, oh, there's a show, someone is inviting me for a show, but oh no, I don't have any pieces. So you wanna sort of stock up a few pieces at least. Yeah, and making tasks, creation, management of time, finance, communication. And yeah, having a website has been good for me. Yeah, I need, I need to be prolific somewhat. And the gallery relationship is difficult too sometimes. I have two good galleries, or like maybe three in Winnipeg. Uh, there's one Tara Davis boutique in, uh, in, the, in the exchange. She sells lots of Canadian made things. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm one of the makers who make things in Canada. And yeah, Gallery Lacoste in near Corridon area. And the furniture, so I, I thought it was interesting. Furniture shop called me in, uh, called Hatke on Grant. 
I love their furniture and yeah, I guess furniture and artwork, they usually go well together. And I had done collaboration with other artists too. This was in Winnipeg, a place called the Graffiti Gallery in uh, Point Douglas area. There's a old factory turned into gallery. So I did a few, you can maybe see some shapes I usually use. And other artists did those. There was like about a two dozen artists, I think, participated. And but they, they kept it all black and white. So even though some designs don't really work together, if they, if they were in color, they kind of look cohesive as a whole. It's just one of the walls of out of like five or six walls. And this too, if you if you uh, come to the area. Um, Maryland in Wolseley, there's food fair and the side of the building has this. Yeah, a friend of mine, she's also an artist, Gabrielle Funk. She did those dogs and I did the surrounding. And I like colorful, this is my bike. And the idea was, oh, she, Gabrielle, Funk, she thought, oh, there are lots of dogs in the neighborhood. And sometimes they are shouting at each other. We don't know as humans if they're, you know, angry, territorial, and being mad at each other, or just like, you know, sending love to each other by barking. And I thought she was really interesting in this because it's human conditions too. Sometimes we don't know how to express things. So, yeah some love could be twisted and become violent sometimes. It's not always nice though, but you know, miscommunication and communication. And her mom, Gabrielle's mom, came one day when we were working on this and there's, I didn't take a picture of this. There's an older mural painting this side and it's a scene of fruit market from like early 1900s. And there's a watermelon in it. She says, you know, Gabrielle, the other artist's mother, she says, hey, you guys, if there's like an old painting for 20 years there, you probably want to bring in some of the elements in yours. I thought like, oh yeah, you're right, right about that. So I hid a watermelon here as part of the dots. This is the only photorealistic looking thing I've done, I think in the past years being away from that and just doing abstract most of the time. Yeah, and I love mural painting because there's, uh, it's not gallery specific. I, I love and hate the gallery setting because I, I don't know, it's not very inviting for me either to like the idea of going to the gallery, you know, dedicate my time for looking at artworks. I might, I'm not always maybe there, even though I'm an artist, I might like just now having a walk with friends better. So being not gallery specific was always, is always interesting to me and random audience, whether you like the painting or not, you hate it even, you have to look at it when you go to that area. Um, yeah, it's also a message board to the larger public. And this too, this is on Main Street at Sutherland. It's done about five years ago by the same group, almost similar core group of people, which did the other black and white painting. Yeah, it's part of the mural festival in Winnipeg called Wall to Wall. There's seven artists. I did those wiggly lines. And other artists did a lot more. It's, it's in a way, it's a sad area of the city because lots of low-income people and this hotel is not used really as a hotel, but it's like a long-term, um, more like apartment for low-income people. And when we were working on this, the people who actually live in the area said, oh, this is so good. We don't feel enough attention in the city and everything is painted gray and this brings some light to the life. So I didn't really know that that would happen but that was sort of surprise for us that it was actually something positive for them 
at least to some of them. And I had a, an opportunity to go to Churchill, the town of Churchill in Manitoba with other artists. And everyone had, like, I think 12 or 14 artists. Every artist had a wall space or building we could paint on. And this is pump house, which pumps the water to the town. So it's sort of an essential facility for the town. And I thought, okay, I want to do the cycle of water coming from the tap. It goes into the use at home or other places and it evaporates and seeps into other places and eventually comes back to the tap. It's a simple thought, but I, I like the cycle like I did in the movie sort of uh, collage. Ending is the beginning and beginning is the ending. And you'll see this when you come from the airport in Churchill. And there's a longer curve, large curve, right before going into the town, and it's after the curve. And also this was in Taiwan. You remember the ATM room with the colorful design? The next year for the annual festival theme, I they, they called me again and said, uh, yeah, you can do the wall of this bank building. It's about 25 story for this year. The, whole, uh, the theme of this year is home. So I thought, okay, two people can make a nice family. And even though, you know, there's, it's in Taipei, the capital of Taiwan, no one really owns a single dwelling because the space is so small. Everyone lives, and if it's a house, if they call, call, it, call it a house, it's usually a condominium of our apartment. Yeah, but I, the house is in the same. They, they think of this house as like, yeah, house. Same idea as us. So I made a design on computer and they, some workers went up and pasted vinyl. It's a removable vinyl uh, adhesive. I can't imagine how. It was, I was not there because I was here and I just sent the image to them. So it was there for one year because it's an annual festival. It's a close up. And this is also public realm too. It's in Kildonan Park in the Winnipeg. Uh, there is a competition, design competition, and uh, this architecture firm called uh, uh, Nadi Design, they're located in downtown Winnipeg, and we teamed up to realize uh, this public artwork. It, it's a pond. Have you been to Kildonan Park? There's a restaurant, pavilion building, and there's a restaurant, and behind that is a pond, man-made pond. And in the winter time, they freeze it to use it as a skating rink. And they wanted something functional, lights for the skates, skate, skaters. And this building is made in 1960s, you know, the mid-century modern period. And the project called for some relation to the park. So there's an Italian designer. Um, who made this lamp in the 60s called the Arco lamp. It's an interior reading lamp. It's huge globe of lamp suspended by sleek steel structure. And the base of that interior lamp had a huge chunk of uh, marble cube as counterweight. And I thought, okay, that's, that's a really beautiful design. I've seen that many times and I wanted to use it with you know, some fins that I often use in my work. And the finial, because this park is one of the oldest parks in the Winnipeg, it's more than a century old. And in the classical design, they use lots of turned finials used, you know, using lathe. So I thought, oh, okay, I wanna use that too. So this is, we have three of those. They're all shaped differently, slightly this, Pink one is you know, more upward movement and those are down. This is also down. Yeah, I thought of the colors, warmer colors, cause it's winter. 
you want to feel warm. Also in summertime, you don't want to be using green or blue because it's all green. It's beautiful, like nice greenery here. So it's still act as contrasting colors. So I thought, okay, warm colors. I love those colors, com color combinations. I would wear those clothes any day with those colors together. Oh, I didn't have image when it's lit up. It, it lights up in rainbow color. Uh, it's, prong it's a programmed um, LED light and they change in rainbow color scheme constantly. I can pull an image later, I think. Yeah, so it's public artwork is good for me because that budget and space and uh, technical requirement, I wouldn't be able to do it all by myself. It's financially not possible. Teaming up, finding fabricator is not too difficult, but you know, like, again, the space and financial uh, aspects of that, it's hard, but with public artwork setting, I can. It's very satisfying. And that three-dimensional thing sort of comes from my thinking in three-dimensional. Uh, th things like this would work. I always, when I do two-dimensional things, like paintings and embroidery, I always think three-dimensionally. Just the output becomes flat. Doesn't mean I think flat all the time. And as much as I love bright colors with you know very saturated um, tones, I love the natural colors of wood and glass, like transparency of glass. I wouldn't paint those things. And those quartz at the bottom. Yeah, just hands-on, I can feel the wood grain. I can smell it. Walnut has, you know, special particular smell also. And yeah, I love working with wood. So this too, I thought of some sort of space station where people can live in this pod, go to this common area and have the elevator shaft and move to the other places. So my scale is sort of big. This one small pod is like 10, 10 family apartment. That's the scale I want to imagine. It just happens that it's only three or two feet tall in real life. But I I think of those as a small scale version of bigger public artwork. It's a close up. So this part is ebony. So it's black wood, naturally black. It's walnut. This is maple. This is a walnut too. And it's cherry. And sometimes those are bamboo skewers. But when they're polished, they look nice, those bamboo skewers. This too, I didn't draw dots. Those are drilled and bamboo skewers push up in with glue and cut flush and polished. So they have dots made of bamboo. And this too, I found one day at an antique store, a broken uh, pair of antlers. So this parts, these parts were broken off from the beginning. So they looked incomplete. They literally looked, okay, those are broken, not very well kept. Or maybe the nature caused it. Maybe the antlers broke off when the, you know, the animal was wearing those. But I thought, oh, okay, that's a nice, nice starting point for me. I love mending things. I love sharpening blades for my woodworking. You know, it's sort of broken in a sense when the cutting edge is not functioning, it's sort of repairing. And I love the idea of repairing. So I just added those shapes to make it look like more like my artwork. And it looks like it's sort of meant to be like that. And we uh, renovated our house a lot. Like we we uh, gutted it to the studs and to pull all the you know knob and tube wiring. And you can see those specks of metal. I love recycling and those, I drilled holes to the diameter of uh, copper wire and glued them in. 
So they're shiny in certain lights. Look at this too. It looks gigantic because of the way I photographed it from the down. Uh, this is also my idea for the larger public artwork. It's only a little larger than you know, 14 inches probably tall. And my idea of this is like monstrous mosquito of Manitoba. It's so notorious. If you go into the bush in summertime, oh my God, I don't know what I was in for that day. So yeah, like wings are not located near the, you know, thorax. It's just on the side, but this is the needle. They eat the mouth to suck the blood out of, yeah. I love, I love, I love, because it's so labor intensive in a way that I, I carve it mostly by hand and sand them sometimes using machines. Yeah, I like the process, how it evolves, not like drawing, it's immediately I can make the line and call it done. But this one, make the line on wood, then I have to, you know, sometimes band saw, cut it and shape it. And by the time it's done, I have another idea. Oh, I could, this part could be used this way instead of how I originally intended. And I like that. I like that. I learn from different mediums of my own. Oh, I learned this technique from woodworking. So let's use that for painting and painting technique. Oh yeah, this like, you know, this way of making shapes, I can use that in woodworking. I, I learned from me those things and this too. You know, you saw some of the characters from my collage with the, the long, long beak on the face, more like a bird, bird-like person. It, there's, it's limited in collage, but it's tiny. The, one inch is about the size of the person. So yeah, but I, I, as I said, I think three-dimensionally, and this is what I think those little details, knees and pointy toes, that's my influence of visiting India. They have, you know, traditional pointy toe shoes. And I love the European uh, color decoration of royal family, things like that. And yeah, and the crown. So it's a nice outlet for me. Yeah, I like this, same people, but more detailed. And I try to do very grow slowly. I usually try to do 100 of something. It's a series, I don't call it a series series, but I try to do 100 things. And by comparing the very first one and the 100th one, I see the big difference. But you know, number 55 and 56, they're kind of the same, almost the same. I like that kind of slow process-based growth in my work. And I try to do the best because if I slack off and people say bad things about it, I know why, because I slacked off. You know, people just think, oh, this is crappy. Yeah, I know I did a crappy job. I knew that. And I don't like that. You know, you don't want to be called that. And if I slack off and people say great things about it, and yeah, the bigger the public, you know, the bigger, the better it's published, it's like, I could have done actually better. This is not me. Don't, you know, don't put label like that on me. But you know, that's my fault. I slacked off and people liked it. So I can't lie to myself. So my philosophy doesn't always work 100% as I want to, but I try to do the best I can. So even if people beat me up, I can take that beating because that was me. So, and this is what I'm working on right now. I'm. Do you know the process of glue lamination? I have only three or four more images now to the end. It's called glue lamination. Each, uh, it's hard to show, is there anything else? It's like this in the end. Uh, you can't see in this picture, but there's already a thin sheet of one eighth thickness of pine glued together 10 times already here to make the curve because you can't bend the wood as is. You could steam it with a really high heat, almost like 100 degrees 
Celsius. But there's limitation and it's really hard to join the ends together in that steaming process. So I glued thin layers of wood multiple times to make the frame like this. But it's basically a picture frame. And what I'm making at the moment is it's eventually going to be like this. This is what you saw in the previous image, the same shape. It's from different angles. It looks a little bit more horizontally longer than this image, but it's actually the same dimensions, same ratio. It's a Japanese woodworking called kumiko. It's very intricate lattice work. So one piece of wood, if you see me on the screen now, and it laps over. So one notch, half notch, half notch to the other side. So they meet together to make the same thickness. So that's what's happening. Not, sorry, not very high resolution. It's what's happening in those all those intersections. And this is about seven and a half feet in diameter. And this is about five feet in width. Yeah, it's gonna be in Lethbridge later in, in, in the end of um, March. It's a Japanese cultural center they're building right now. And yeah, I applied for this competition and I won the competition. So I, this is very Jap traditional Japanese woodworking stuff, but they, they usually don't make them in those organic shapes. They usually go with a very rectangular or square or evenly circular, not sort of odd shaped like these. And I, I like the idea of this like fig, fig fruit. I always thought of, think of fig as something, something good in it, like happiness, nice things. It's sweet too. And the spirit, it's a mountainous area, Lethbridge, because it's a portrait of the landscape of Lethbridge. It's the mountain, Rocky Mountains, and spirit is going up and reaches the sun. And this is the same negative of that inside of the sun. And, you know, if you know the internment of Japanese uh, Canadians in the World War II, yeah, lots of people in BC were sent to, you know, inner. Uh, provinces like uh, Alberta, Lethbridge, and in Manitoba too. There were lots of sugar beet farms who hired them for really cheap during the wartime for the supply of sugar. So this is the shape of a beet. It's very sim simplified, so you can't maybe tell, but there's going to be a writing about this artwork uh, when it's done, attached uh, close to the wall. So this is how it's nice. Closer look is like this. Uh, I think there's my finger there for the size. Yeah, it's like that. It's very tedious. I don't have the right tools of the artisans in Japan that they use, which makes the process faster. But I don't have the luxury of having those tools right now. So I'm just doing with the things I made, some jigs and tools that I made for this purpose. Yeah, and this is how it becomes all together. It's like still in the process of making. Yeah, this is the last image of my uh, presentation today. So you probably get somewhat of what I do. Yeah, thank you for listening.